so I thought um, I'd take advantage of some beautiful evening natural sunlight and um, film a video for you. Um, an actual update video. Uh, not a review, not a vlog, an actual update video because it's been, it's been a while. So I've got my bullet journal with my notes for this video and let's jump into it. So first off, life stuff, what have I been up to? Uh, not a heck of a lot, just uh, working, normal, enjoying a beautiful summer here in Nova Scotia. It's hot during the day, the evening is amazing. It's um, with the excuse of my uh, constant nemesis, the lighting, it's, it's, it's great lighting today, but it's going to be kind of in and out. So, and you're going to hear lots of I'm kind of out of kind of out of practice with all this. Um, how about let's talk about some whips. So this is not everything. My mom's visiting for a week and she just joined me on the step. She's not going to be in the video, but she's uh, she's going to hang out here with me because it's so nice outside. Inside it's really hot, but it's perfect out here. Um, okay, so I'll show you some whips. So my main focus right now, my aim is actually to finish this by the end of the week. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I am kind of on a roll with it. Uh, here we go. This is The Bookshelf by Little House Needlework. Uh, let me get something behind there. There we go. All that's left to do is this top part, there's a, I forgot to bring the cover photo out, but there's a vase with these plants coming out and then the books on this side, and it's done. So hopefully by the end of the week, that's my main focus right now. Um, I'm not really working on anything else until this is done. Um, and I'll show you. So there's that. Next, past a time, my, one of my other favorite projects that I've gushed about already. I don't know if I've gotten much done on this since I showed it to you last. Here's the cover picture, a little reminder. Here we go. Past a time, here we go. Here's where we are on that. I know I had at least most of that jar done last time I showed you, but I've got a little bit of the lace on the bottom, and I've started here, let me get my fingers to it, here is where the picnic tablecloth starts. There we go. I'm not sure when I will jump back into this, I'm really excited to, but I've got some things, some goals that I want to accomplish first before I get back to this one. There we go. Um, I started, if you watched Adele's video, you know this. I started um, Frosted Pumpkin Sweet as Pie Club with Adele, and she sent me this fabric to do it on. It's a beautiful 32 count fabric from Chromatic Alchemy, and I can't pronounce the name of it, so I'm not going to try. There we go. So I just started on the first pie, and that is a chocolate cream pie. And the next one to do is a key lime pie. So I really just got a one-day start on that just to just to get it going, and I'm not sure when I'm going to get back to that, but hopefully soon. And... Excuse my dog barking, if you can hear her. I'm sure you can. I started this project along with um, Emily from Eclectic Possessions during Mania, and it is, there we go, Evangeline by Lavender and Lace. And I'm doing this on just an olive piece of cashel, and, <coughs> excuse me, all I have done 
is the beginning of her dress. There, the beginning of her dress on the bottom. So I think I only put about two days into this so far. It is really beautiful and a lot of fun to work on. I'm not sold on this fabric yet, but we'll see. Hopefully it turns out well. <coughs> Excuse me. And like I said, these are just a few of my whips that I've been working on in the last um, month or two. There's others that I've touched a little bit, like maybe just to put in maybe 20 stitches or so or half a day on. And uh, really the progress isn't enough to, to warrant showing it off. Okay, the next whip, we're gonna sh whip I'm going to show you is Christmas on Gingerbread Lane. So like I said, my mom is up visiting, and if you remember, we did the Wacky Witches together, and it turned out fantastic. I'm actually going to show it to you in a little while, because it's an FFO. And um, so she's visiting, and just like with Wacky Witches, we decided to start another project, a Christmas one. And um, we're doing the same thing, so whenever she comes to visit me or I go to visit her, we're going to hand it off and take turns stitching on it. And... I'm going to show you the progress so far. Now all of this she's done and I'm blown away because <laughs> it's so much and it looks amazing. So here it is, there we go. And this was a piece of white uh, 14 count Ada that has the silver flex in it and I forget what that's called, do you remember what that's called? The, ones with, the one with the gold flex, I think, is called Gold Dust. I'm not sure what this is called. But anyway, what I did, like I said, it was white. I tea dyed it with my tea dye tutorial, which you can find under my videos. Um, I altered it just a little bit. I put the um, Ada in a little longer than, um, than I did in my tutorial. And I think it turned out great. And this project's looking amazing. So my plan is, as soon as I finish... Um, the bookmark or the bookshelf I jump into this one and my mother is going to be so she's here for a week and the next time she's going to be here is Abbott's birthday the end of August so I've got to give it back to her then if it's not finished so I'm gonna race 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 and see how much I can get done because she got so much done I need to I need to do it some justice and I don't know if I mentioned this before, but the other project we did together, so my mother and I stitch backwards, so like if I stitch like this, she stitches like this, or whatever. We stitch backwards from each other. So with our last project, she stitched her normal way and I adjusted my way. And this time, I'm stitching my normal way and she adjusted, so there's a lot going on here, but um, it's really fun to have those projects that we worked on together. Um, okay, so I have a finish. I started this project with Emily, um, Eclectic Possessions, during Mania, and this is Lizzie Borden by Primitive Hair. Here we go. And this is a finish. And this is stitched on a uh, 28 count tea dye piece of scrap Zweiker linen. And I told my mother that I was planning to frame this and hang it in the guest room where she and my dad stay when they come to visit. And I'm going to call it Fair Warning. There we go. She's sitting over there on the step having a little smirk. She thinks I'm joking. I'm not joking. <laughs> um, so yay, I have a finish. I actually have two finishes, but... One of them's an FFO. I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. Um, okay. So let me just look at my list here. Okay, let's talk for a second about some haul. Um, I don't have much to show you. I do have a few things that came in, but um, they don't really... Like a few magazines and some pieces of fabric and things like that. I'm not going to show those off because they're they're mostly pretty uninteresting. Oh, I forgot something. Um, there we go. No, I didn't. 
we're gonna talk about this in just a minute so Valdani so if you saw my thread gather video I did a review video on some threads that the thread gatherer sent to me to review now Valdani sent me threads as well and I'm not going to do a whole video on that um, but I am going to talk about it for a second so so Valdani sent me this this is their um, Vintage Hughes Sampler, Pearl Cotton, size 12. Uh, there we go. So they sent me this colorway pack. And you can see it's still so, it's still closed, so I can't speak to that. I haven't had a opportunity to use the Pearl Cotton yet, and I'm not really sure what to use them on. Um, but they're really beautiful, and if you have any suggestions, please let me know, because I'd love to find a way to use these. Um, I've used pearl cotton very sparingly before. My Chatelaine has a bit of pearl cotton, um, but I would never substitute anything into that. That's way beyond my ability. So, any ideas, let me know. They also sent me, let me show you this first. Um, this is a selection of just their hand-dyed cotton, embroidery cotton, six ply, ten yards, and they're more vibrant colors. So very springy, summery. I'm excited to use these. There we go. I'm sure I can find something really nice to use these on. And okay, the last bit, I did use these. This is their, um, it is, hold on, I think it's five ply? No, three strand cotton floss, my bad. And it's Artist S Palette. Now I use these on, this is why I, I brought these out to talk about. I use these to stitch Lizzie Borden. Everything in here except the black is stitched using those Valdani threads. And they substituted really well. So I recommend if you're going to get this design, consider this palette because um, I think there are, let me see, I used one, two, three, four, five, six. I used at least six of the colors in here. So it was a pretty good a pretty good palette to use. There we go. I will say, I hear a lot of good things about Valdani, and I hear um, some not so good things about threads breaking and whatnot. Um, I didn't have any problems with thread breaking. Um, they stood up really well. The colors are gorgeous. The variegation is really well done. It's not, it's not. Um, I was going to say clumpy, but what I mean, patchy, where you have like a little tiny bit of a color, and then it's, it's very even and nice. What I didn't like is that it's three stranded. I like to usually stitch with two strands, so then you end up, and especially with the variegated, you don't really want to do the loop method. Um, I ended up being able to use two strands and then having one left over, and I did, I don't like to waste, so what I did do was cut that and do the loop method with that piece, and it worked out well with the project I was using it on. Um, but I would have liked to see it be four ply or six so that you, you have that option to use two strands. So that is a downside. Um, the, the cotton thread felt nice using it, same as any other cotton thread. So um, I guess I enjoyed it. The colors are beautiful, but I wouldn't necessarily go out of my way to buy um, to buy one of the palettes if I didn't have a specific project in mind for it. So not necessarily a rave, but not, not a rant review either. Um, so the other piece of haul, now, I gotta do this kind of strategically. So, I signed up to a Facebook group called Stitchers of Male Art. Um, I think you can find it. If you can't find it, leave me a comment and I'll see about adding you. Um, the idea is it's a swap group and um, you make male art, so they're stitched envelopes. Now my partner has sent me hers and I'm going to show this to you without showing my address. So let me, <laughs> how can I do this? Okay, there we go. So this is her envelope. She stitched it on Ada and she did a beautiful job. Uh, the theme for this was summer. And this came all the way from Holland. And there you can see it's stamped and the stamp is canceled. So we're there. And here's the back. So my hand is covering her return address. Um, she did some nice sundaes and ice creams and then the word summer. And I couldn't be happier. 
it's really beautiful. Um, I did mention in one of my other videos that I was doing an envelope, so I'll show you mine in a few minutes. So she added some goodies for me. She sent me some beautiful ribbon and a bunch of the Coloris DMC threads, which I haven't used yet, so I'm really excited. There's one more. Um, a pack of John James tapestry needles and a beautiful postcard from Holland with a nice message on the back. And she lined her envelope with this really nice fabric and closed it off with a ribbon and a button. So it was a lot of fun and if you're interested in that sort of thing I recommend you joining. I'm not sure when I'll do another one. Um, the next, the next swap was just posted and the theme is, or it's going to be posted soon, and the theme is birds. I love the theme idea. I'm not really ready to jump back into doing another envelope yet. I want to get some other things finished. So here I'll show you mine. Okay. Let me see. How are we going to do this? Okay. Here's the front of mine. Pretty plain with a sun. Now the reason for that is, I actually made an error and sewed and, and did my design for the front in the space that would be the back. So how it ended up going is my flap is actually going to flap over on the front and my stamps are going to go here. Um, and I checked in the post office and it's going to be fine. Um, but there we go. So there's my summer with my beach, ball, beach balls, and the address is here, and the stamps will go there. And then, whoops, I don't know if I just flashed my address or not. And here's the back. My address, my return address is up here, and my beach scene. I used the uh, Frosted Pumpkin Summer, I can't remember what it's called. It's their summer sampler sal they released last year. Not their big one with all of the blocks, but their smaller one. So you can find that on their website. But there we go, and I used a Pulse Stitches variegated floss that Adele sent me in a rainbow color to do my border. And my mom helped me sew this up. Actually, she didn't help me sew it up. She sewed it up for me because <laughs> my sewing machine went crazy. And because she's a darling and super crafty, there's my gingham interior fabric. So. But I do feel confident that if I did it again, I could do this myself. Because um, it wasn't too hard and she showed me how to do it. So there we go. So I'm going to get that mailed off tomorrow. This is the other reason I made a video tonight. The weather's perfect, the light's gorgeous, and I need to mail this tomorrow and I wanted to show it off. Okay, FFOs. I'm so excited to show you these. So I have quite a few to show off here. Um, some of these were FFO'd a little while ago, and um, two of them, and I just never got around to showing them. I don't think I did anyway. But my sister in law, again, I don't sew, um, my sister in law turned these into pillows for me, or for my son, really. Um, I did these designs for my son. I'm just picking off a few pieces of, of cat hair and stuff. Um, so there's this one. This is King Valiant. This pattern is King Valiant by Clouds Factory. And she just turned it into, so there's the colors. There's a nice orange and a purple and like a natural color on the back. So there we go. This lives in his playroom. And... Here's the other one. This is the, I can't remember the exact name, but it's the Pirate Sampler from Clouds Factory. There we go. In brown and a red with a natural back color. Okay, my camera stopped recording for some reason. Um, anyway, took my glasses off. My eyes are getting a little tired. Let me just show you this quickly again. So there's um, the Clouds Factory Pirate Sampler Pillow. Um, 
I'm going to try and go through these kind of quick because I'm worried now about, whoop, about time. So I got a few things framed. Um, I go to a stitching group and one of the women in the stitching group is a framer and she, she's very good to frame things for us. So, um, here is my Stiach along number four, uh, last year's Stiach mystery sampler. Here we go. The mosquitoes are coming out now. Um, okay, this is Miracle Grow by Ink Circles. And I've been holding off putting these on the wall so that I could show them off. And here's Afternoon in New York by the Country Cottage Needleworks or Little House. It's the same company, but there we go. I think it's Country Cottage does this series. So there we are. And hopefully I can show this one. This is Wacky Witches that my mother and I did together. And we're so pleased how this turned out. I'm going to see if I can show it without glare. Mm, that, I'm squinting so I can see it. There we go. That's pretty good. So we splurged and got glass on this one because it's a pretty important project to us. And it looks gorgeous. I don't know if we've decided who's going to have custody of this project or not. Have we decided? No, she's shaking her head no. We haven't decided. So, okay. what is it? I think you're going to get it this year. She thinks I'm going to get it this year. Okay. Fair enough. Maybe the Christmas one will go in her house this year, since we're there at Christmas anyway, and we're my son and I are usually here at Halloween, so that might work out fair. Um, so there's that. And possibly my favorite um, FFO ever, maybe ever, I don't know, is this amazing bag. So, this is my frosted pumpkin, um, pumpkin passport around, let's go on an adventure, I call it my around the world project. Everybody has seen it. And I'm going to stand up for you to really appreciate this. Let me see. Ugh. Okay. Trisha. At Three Owl Threads, I gotta put my glasses on so I can see what I'm showing ya. Okay, Trisha at Three Owl Threads, I sent this project to her and asked her if she could make me a bag. Originally I wanted a project bag, and she said, well, what if I do a bag with handles? And I was like, wow, a tote bag, that's perfect. We picked up some fabric, and she came back with this beauty. It's huge, I love it. It held my wacky witches in the frame. It held all the stuff I showed you today. So there we go. We picked out, let me see if I can show you. We picked out gorgeous map fabric for the inside and she chose, let me just show it to you on the back. Whoops. This project is so huge, it's ruining my setup. She chose this beautiful I'll call them quilt blocks, I'm not really sure. Fabric. Because it's colorful and it goes well with the project. And I love it. I joked that I could carry my toddler and ten of our chickens, our ten chickens in this bag together. And I think I probably could. So this bag is perfect for a beach bag or we like to go do some adventuring where we just drive around to new places and this will take care of everything I need. Um, poor Trisha was so worried. She made this bag for me and uh, one of her quilting retreats and she was so worried that I wouldn't like it because it's massive. Well she doesn't know me very well. When it comes to bags the bigger the better and I couldn't love it more. So Trisha thank you so much. I, I love it. I'm blown away. And I guess, is that it? I think there was a few other things I wanted to mention. Um, let me just look here. Okay, plans. Today, while I was at work, um, I decided to 
make a spreadsheet of all of my whips. Turn this. There we go. Um, I was talking to Emily and she schooled me on spreadsheets and sent me hers and I ran with it and filled in all my whips right now. Without going through all of them and digging them all out, so just from looking at Instagram and my memory, um, I wrote down 30. <laughs> my mother is right here going. Um, I have 30 whips and I really got to cut that down. So I'm still going with my two finishes and allowing myself one new start if I want. Um, I probably still will, but so I've got a uh, Lizzie Borden finished and my envelope finished, but I did start Pie Club, so I now have to reset that. So the bookshelf is going to be next, and then possibly Haunted Mansion, um, the project I was doing with Garrett. We'll see. Um, but uh, yeah, I gotta cut that list down because it's crazy. Um, so two other things. Um, Last time I made a video showing my projects and things, I talked about I was getting ready to go to a stitching retreat in the spring. And I did. And it was a lot of fun. I won some prizes. I won a Lizzie Kate um, chart that says uh, something like stitching forever, housework, whenever, if you know which one I mean. I won that and the fabric to do it on. And I believe the threads. I have to go look through it again. But, um,. I had an amazing time and while I was there I did a little bit of video on um, some of the other projects that people had completed. We, they had a table set out that was like show and tell and you could put any projects on it that you were proud of or whatever. And I filmed a little bit of that and I'll put that right here. Um, okay, I hope you liked that. I had such a great time. Uh, uh, my LNS is, I guess it would be my LNS. It's in another province, and that's who puts on this stitching retreat. And the ladies there said that they'd be interested in being interviewed for a video. So we might have that coming up after the next retreat, which is in the fall. Um, so we'll see. So something else I did lately was my family went to um, Annapolis Royal which is only a few hours away from not even a few hours it's maybe an hour and a half or so away from where I live and um, we went there to look at the tapestry so um, like something like a hundred volunteers over a year or a couple of years um, they stitched this huge beautiful tapestry to tell the history of where I live and they use a variety of different stitches they um, 
it was definitely a community building project and it's something they're really proud of. Um, it tells the history of the area from our First Nations people, the Mi'kmaq, up until present day, more or less present day. And probably the coolest thing for me about it is that when the Queen came to visit several years ago, she actually took the time out to put a few stitches in. And the piece that um, the Queen stitched on, there's a portrait of her, is it her great-grandmother, Queen Victoria? Great-great-grandmother? Anyway, Queen Victoria, <laughs> um, she she stitched on Queen Victoria's necklace, so that was really special, and I wanted to go and film a little bit of that for you. So this this might this clip is might run a little bit long, but you know, fast forward a bit through it. But take a minute to enjoy the stitching. I tried to highlight some of the specialty areas, and it's huge, it's massive, and uh, so I'll insert that here. Take a look. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, finally got back to a whip update. I'm really excited. I've been really into watching everybody's whip parade videos. I love that and I'd love to do one of those pretty soon. Um, especially now that I have my list and it's not quite as overwhelming as I thought it was uh, to throw all that together. So hopefully I'll get to that soon. We'll see. Anyway, have a great day. Bye.